part three, the years 2019, 2020, and 2021. My timeline isn't exact, but I needed to organize my experiences in an order I could write about. When I say it's 2019, 2020, and 2021, I am referring to the main event that defined that year for me. The stories themselves bleed into the years on either side. Obviously, COVID-19 came in waves, and everybody knows a school year doesn't line up perfectly with a calendar year. Like with the typos and malapresms, please just roll with my exposition. The rising action in my 2019 was losing both my home and my job and getting assaulted by a former coworker. This is a trigger warning for sexual assault. That part is not a joke. While this whole attempt at book writing might be a joke, my sexual assault is not. I was touch averse for a long time after it happened and think I still suffer from some PTSD. The climax that defined my 2019 was getting everything I lost back and better than before. This cascade of events that pulled me out of homelessness, an abusive situation, and into a job I truly enjoyed showing up for amounted to pure luck. Unfortunately, the resolution to my 2019 was that COVID took it all away again. The rising action in my 2020 was becoming a fake teacher. I started out wanting to be a real teacher, but the education machine in Arizona is just too broken to be fixed from the inside. I also started dating with pandemic precautions, but was held back by wanting to relive some specific childhood and adolescent trauma. The climax that defined my 2020 was accepting that my charter school hired me to commit fraud and leaning into the scam completely. The charter school for which I worked did not care if we taught anything as long as we wrote credit slips. We worked for a business, not an educational institution, that provided a very specific service. We were a printing press for unearned high school diplomas intended for students who would otherwise fall through the cracks, fulfilling the government's objective that there are never adults unable to apply for menial labor and minimum wage jobs. Unfortunately, the resolution to my 2020 was falling in love with a woman who waited a ridiculously long time to tell me something important. By the time she finally confessed, I was already emotionally invested and could not choose to not be in love. The rising action in my 2021 was becoming a real counselor and teacher. Obviously, if I could undo the deaths of everybody who died from COVID, I would happily give up any of the gains I acquired in the pandemic response. That weird fake teaching detour the pandemic put me on finally swerved back to my regular path, and all the economic stimulus payments put my bank account firmly in the black. I finally had the comfortable unhappiness back that was more familiar to me as a social worker than the anxious and almost unbearable unhappiness I had trying to make sense of teaching in a charter school. The climax that defined my 2021 was crippling depression. I've only been in love twice. My first girlfriend was with me, if I use fuzzy math, for eight months. My second girlfriend was with me, if I use even fuzzier math. And she might dispute the title girlfriend since we only ever use the word exclusive for three months. If you add up my two experiences being in a loving relationship, I almost have a whole year as a real man. Even though we broke up before I resumed my regular employment, the crushing sadness from losing the second love of my life didn't hit until three months later. Unfortunately, the resolution to my 2021 was writing another terrible book to avoid killing myself.